another Rest of Talk, um, where we talk to companies and um, the guys who drive those stories on an update of what's been happening. Uh, we're here at the uh, University Club here in Crawley, at the University of WA. And I've got Brad Underwood back from Galileo, who has a fantastic set of uh, conversations to be had today. Um, great results. Um, you make the an announcement and spectacular share price rise, etc., etc. Brad, tell us all about it. Yeah, good to see you again, Noel. Uh, we made the release uh, two weeks ago today, I think it was. Uh, it's just been a blur since then because there's been so many, so much interest in what we released and that was around the discovery we've made at the Callisto uh, prospect where we intercepted 33 metres at 2 grams per tonne 3E. So that 2 grams per tonne is a combination of palladium, platinum and gold. It's a measure that we use for these types of systems uh, and it's mostly palladium. There's also copper and nickel associated with that intersection. So it's a large, thick, wide intersection of disseminated sulfides with reasonable grade. We think that grade might be increasing to the east, but even as it is, it's a particularly good result for us and we're obviously very happy about it. The last time we spoke, we talked about potentially a palladium province here. That, and you've met, mentioned that it's mainly palladium. Is that consistent with your thinking or what you wish? Yeah, so that's, uh, yes, very much so. And the reason we think it could, there's a potential there to be a province is because of the scale of the ultramafic host rocks. We've known for many years, in fact, for decades, that those host rocks have potential for palladium and PGEs and for nickel as well. Uh, it's the scale of the host rocks which lead us to believe and hope that this could be a province style discovery which might mean um, a few things one of those being large resources and the other being uh, potential for more than one deposit so very early stage but it looks good and it is panning out the way that we thought looking at the results you know uh, the intercepts the width of that my gut feel thinking is that this is more than a proof of concept this is more as you said a discovery uh, is my narrative correct or am i a bit too far ahead uh, no, we're definitely always optimists in this game, but it is a discovery in terms of a mineralised system. So we have discovered a mineralised system with economic potential. So from that one drill hole, we know that we have disseminated sulphides within a layered ultramafic host rock of the sort that have uh, that host deposits in other parts of the world. So it's a discovery of a mineralised system. Uh, how economic that discovery is depends on a large number of factors, the geometry, the size, uh, the commodity price at the time of mining, so a large number of other factors. But we can confidently say this is a discovery of a significant mineralized system. Okay. And, I mean, you, you talk about you know, potential of a geological continuity that you, that you guys uh, assumed before and now you're seeing. Um, how long have this been in your mind, like you're going, you, you know, that gut feel that we actually might have something big and now, and we need to drill it. Now you have, and now it's proof in the, it's in the pudding, I guess. So how long has that been, you know, playing in your mind? We've been working in the area a long time. So the potential has always been in the back of our minds. Uh, I've been working there since 2010, even before we listed. Our major shareholder held ground in the area since the late 90s and early 2000s. So it's always been a concept in our minds that this area has potential for a significant discovery. Uh, it's just taken a long time to demonstrate that the potential is real. And now we need to go back and to see whether there is size and scale to the discovery that we've made. So it's always been there uh, as a concept. We've always been working on it, and even at our other prospects within Norseman as well, at the Mission Sill and Jimbalana, we're working on the same con conceptual understanding that these areas have the potential for a large discovery. Okay. Um, I mean, a large discovery, you met analogy to Platts Reef, and uh, we all know that's a, a big system. Um, you know, from investors' point of view, is that just one of these companies' analogies that people throw around, or...? Are you really feeling that maybe you have something similar? It's similar in the style of mineralization. So we're looking at disseminated sulfides over a consistent thickness uh, at the base of a layered ultramafic cell. Uh, we, when we look at the chips, we've described them as a peroxinite. Uh, these types of systems 
are quite hard to catalogue with a hand lens, so we have sent them to the petrographer who will use a microscope to confirm that. Uh, but based on the geological logging on site, it does look similar. The host rock looks similar. The mineralization style looks similar. Uh, and it's the scale that we don't know whether that's mm. uh, similar. And there is a lot of work to be done. We need to do a lot more drilling to understand how large this could be. Uh, but at a very early stage, it appears that Platte Reef is the closest analogy on a global scale. With, with more drilling, are you going to see potentially more size, in, um, will it, it will it unveil those kind of things to you as you drill more? The additional drilling will absolutely tell us whether it's increasing in size. We don't know whether it is until we've done that drilling. So of course we are optimistic that it increases in grade and size and thickness, uh, but we just can't tell without drilling. Uh, so that's where the potential upside lies for investors as well. Uh, so at the moment we have an early discovery valuation. If this pans out to be a large resource, I think you will see the value go up again. Uh, so that's the uh, risk reward profile based on the next round of drilling that we've got coming up. Mm, okay. Um, I guess, you know, the, the obvious question is that, you know, with all the positive results coming through, uh, is that sort of been throwing spanners into your plan A and you shift it to plan B because now that you're getting these kind of results? We've always been flexible with the way that we've operated the company. In fact, I think we were talking last time about the requirement of flexibility uh, so that you don't go in with too fixed a plan about how you will approach exploration. We need that flexibility so on occasions like this we can uh, change direction and get back on the ground very quickly. Uh, also about pushing assays through the lab as quickly as possible. Uh, so we've pivoted to Norseman. We are still working in the Fraser range. We have ongoing EM surveys where we're building up targets for further drill testing. Uh, and we have some very good targets in the Fraser range. Uh, however, it's Norseman that will occupy our attention over the next few months and probably till the end of the year and hopefully for many years to come. Okay, look, you know, we apologize. I need to rush this one because our mate is uh, in a trading halt today and uh, in a rush, but news flow, what, what, what can the guys out there um, look out for? You are right, we are, uh, we're in a trading halt today. Uh, if you go back through our previous announcements, we did release the geological logs uh, a, f a few weeks ago now, uh, so I can talk to those. And in each of the drill holes, we have intercepted disseminated mineralization. So the trading halt we're in at the moment is related to the assays from those further five holes, and we'll get those out to market tomorrow. Uh, if you look back a few weeks to that announcement, I don't think the results tomorrow will be a big surprise. I'm uh, hoping that it'll be a very nice result for everybody. And importantly, we are going drilling again very shortly. Uh, so it's um, good news to come. And we also have the rhodium assays that we are expecting. Those should come back uh, in the next few weeks, depending on the, the lab's ability to complete that job. The drilling is the next big catalyst uh, for really understanding what we've got. That's an RC drilling program, uh, approximately 4,000 meters, around 20 holes. And then after that, we'll get into diamond drilling and more RC drilling. So the next round of drilling, uh, we expect to finish over the, the four to five weeks and uh, with assays to follow. So a lot of news flow coming out of Norseman. Okay. You know, we, we end with why Galileo, but I think, you know, from all the videos we've done over the years, uh, it has been years, um, it's really good to see success come to you guys. I think, you know, mineral exploration is all about persistence and being out there. So um, here's your two minutes of shameless sell. Brad, what, what, why Galileo? I think we're a good exploration company. I think we've demonstrated that with the results we've produced. We're also very ambitious. We're never happy with what we've got. We're always looking for more. So I don't think investors should uh, believe or even think for a second that this is it. We will continue exploring and uh, hopefully we'll continue to make discoveries. Okay. Look. I'll let you go and um, thank you for giving us the time and I hope we will have another chat soon and see what's happening. Definitely, we'll speak soon.